Hello and welcome back to Amcot. Last lecture was all about how we can tweak a certain Spark configuration properties to improve your Spark application's performance. But in this lecture, we are going to see one of the most favorite and also most used functions for optimizing your Spark loads, which are cache and persist. And when we will also discuss what are the scenarios where they are very appropriate and what are some of the scenarios where you should avoid those techniques. So without further ado, do, let's get into it. Okay, so last lecture was all about how we can optimize and tune our Spark application by tweaking up the Spark configurations. And there are several ways to do so and we have seen all of them. But now we are going to discuss the most popular optimization techniques that you will going to use in your code on a day to day basis, which is like caching and persisting of the data. This is a very powerful technique and if you understand it correctly, you will be amazed that how fast it will make your Spark workloads. So there are also like the do's and don'ts while caching and persisting of your data. So that's also you want to make sure you are using the right technique. So without further ado, let's get into it. So you may also asking like what is the difference between caching and persisting? So that's the main question and many of them will get confused between these two. So in Spark, they are mostly the synonymous functions. The cache and persist offers the same capabilities, but the persist will have the more control over how and where your data will be stored that we are going to see in this lecture. So the storage will be means like in memory or the disk as well as the serialize and the unserialize. So both contributes to better performance for frequently accessed data frames or the tables in your Spark applications. So first let's take a look at what is cache. So the cache will store as many of the partition read in memory across the Spark executors as the memory allows. So while the data frames may be fractionally cached, partitions cannot be fractionally cached which means that if you have like the 8 partition but only 4.5 partition can fit in the memory, only 4 will be cached. But if then all of the partitions are not cached and when you want to access the data again, the partitions that are not cached will have to be recomputed and it will slow down your Spark jobs. So you have to make sure that you have like enough memory to cache all the data on which you are doing the cache operation. So let's look at this snippet of code. So it is written in Scala, but Scala and Spark don't have that much differences. So as you can see the first one, we are just creating a simple data frame and you are using the cache function here. So cache will just store this data in memory instead of the disk. And also we have just materialized the cache using the count function. So when you execute this command, this, this first count function will take around 5.11 seconds. But if you get that count from the cache, it will only take 0.44 seconds. So this may vary on data frame to data frame. It is not like hard and fast, but you can see the difference of how well the next count function have performed. So as I have already told you that the first count will materialize that cache and the second one will access that cache and it will make your application around 12 times faster. It's not exactly 12 times faster but you'll definitely feel the difference. But you have to remember one thing very clearly. So when you're using this cache or the persist functions, the data frame is not fully cached until you invoke an action, which will go through every record, like the count which we have done here. It, because count operation will work on every record in your data frame. But if you use the action like take, and we have just taken only one record, then only one partition will be cached because Catalyze will realize that you don't even need to compute all the partition just to retrieve one record, right? So it will only cache that one partition from where you're accessing your record. So that was all about the cache and you can use cache in your code and syntax is pretty simple. You just have to give the data frame dot the cache function. That is so simple and don't even require any inputs here. But there is another function which is persist that we're going to see now. So the persist is pretty similar to the cache and there are used synonymous in Spark. But it will provide you more control over how your data is cached 
using the argument known as storage level so as you can see there are different storage levels have given here the first one is like a memory only store the data directly as object and store only in the memory then we have the memory only serialization which is like a data is for serialized as compact byte array and then it will only store into the memory then we have the memory and disk so in this case data is stored directly as objects in memory but if there is insufficient memory then the rest of it will be stored on the disk then we have like the disk only level which is like the data is serialized and it is only stored on the disk then we have the off heap where the data is stored off heap so this off heap memory is used in spark for storage and the query execution and at last we have the memory and disk serialization so this is like a memory and disk but the only difference is the data is serialized when stored in the memory so this was all about different storage levels and what are their meanings and how we can provide it using the storage level argument in the persist function but there are some scenarios where you have to use the persist and cache but there are some other scenarios that you don't have to use those because that will slow down your spark application so let's discuss that now so this is very important and very simple to understand so the first one we'll talk about when we can use this cache and persist functions. So the common use cases for caching are scenarios where you'll want access of the large data set repeatedly for the queries as well as the transformations. So when you have like a data frame which is used many times down the line in your application and you're doing some heavy work after that and using some aggregation as well as use all sorts of shuffling functions on top of that data frame then caching or persistent data frame which depends upon its nature like the size of the data frame you can either use cache or persist to make your workloads more efficient than not using these functions at all so these data frames which are commonly used during iterative machine learning training so when you are building your machine learning application and you have your data set which is used subsequently for the iterative training purposes then caching or persisting the data frames will make more sense and also that if the data frames are accessed commonly for frequent transformation during any ETL process or any data pipeline then also caching and persisting will be a plus point and very beneficial for the performance but there are some scenarios when you have to avoid these operations because not all the use cases will dictate the need of cache so some of the scenarios will may not at all beneficial for the performance of your application so when the data frames are too big to fit into the memory then you should definitely avoid caching the data frame because let's be honest if you're not all partitions are getting cached then if you want to access that data down the line then it will do some lot of works because that data which is not at all cached on the data frame will have to be recomputed and that is not an easy task so the, the caching will not work and not at all optimize your workloads and also if any inexpensive transformation on the data frame and also it is not require a frequent use then you should definitely avoid cache and persist because that will not even make any sense to cache that data frame if you are not using any expensive operation down the line or you are not at all frequently using that data frame as an input to your subsequent logic so that is not at all help you and your application to improve the performance so that was all about how we can use cache and persist operation in your spark application this is very important topic but this theoretical knowledge will not be enough you have to actually use those functions in your spark application and see what impact it is making because there is no hard and fast rule for this you have to iteratively improve your caching and persisting techniques to able to improve the performance of your final spark application so I hope you understand what is cache, what is persist, when to use it, when to not. And if you have any doubts, you can just let me know in the comments and I'll get back to you as soon as possible. I hope you like this lecture. So please subscribe to our channel and also ring the notification bell to get the latest updates. And don't forget to follow us on our social media which I have linked in the description below. Thanks for watching.